Hi, I have been asked to answer the following questions. Question one, who are you and what do you do? So my name is Chris Suter. Uh, essentially, I am involved in tennis. I'm a tennis coach. And as things stand at the moment, I am the project manager for the Judy Murray Foundation, a performance consultant for Tennis Scotland and a performance tutor and consultant for the LTA, which is the British Tennis Association. Question two, how did I get into sport? So my sporting background is very much typical of, uh, I would say, Scottish people in terms of I played a lot of sports uh, in the streets, in the playground, and then eventually tried out a few at local clubs. So I played a lot of golf when I was younger, football, uh, all sorts of things. I was in uh, swimming teams, etc. Uh, and then when I was 12, I started playing tennis, so quite late, but I instantly fell in love with tennis uh, and have been in love with it ever since. Question three, how am I so well known today? Well, personally, I don't think I am that well known, but uh, I suppose people know me from traveling a lot for my work so I've been very lucky to travel all around the world really doing various different things in coaching coaching players and now more coaching coaches so I train coaches primarily for my job so that would be the way that people would know me uh, another way people might know me is through social media I uh, do a lot of stuff on Facebook and Instagram used to be on Twitter but I deactivated that uh, last year Question four, how would you suggest to young kids wanting to get into professional sports? So that's a good question. Number one, uh, to, to be a professional in any sport takes a lot of dedication, time and effort. Uh, and I suppose the biggest focus is time. Uh, in tennis, you could start playing tennis at five years old, but you might not even get to the start of your professional journey until you're 20, 21 years old. So it might be 15, 16 years before you even get to the start line. Uh, other sports, it can be slightly different, but tennis, with it being an individual sport, you pretty much have to primarily do everything yourself or your parents have to help you do it. So the easiest way in terms of uh, keeping it simple would be you have to try and get onto the competitive pathway in your sport. And most importantly, develop a love for your sport and develop the skills that you will need to move up the levels of competition. And my advice would always be to plan ahead. Think about what you're going to need at the next stage of your journey. So that would help you get into a competitive environment in sport. But most importantly, always be thinking, what's the next level up? How do I get there? What skills do I need to do or develop to get there? Question five, how many hours does it take to become a sports coach like you? So there's two ways of thinking of this. The first one is that you can do formal coach education qualifications. In tennis, we have five levels, uh, which go right up to what <laughs> my title in terms of qualification is a master performance coach, which sounds very grand, almost Star Wars like, but you can become qualified or, or get educated formally. Personally, the most important one is that you have to dedicate yourself to becoming a student of the game for the rest of your life. So if you want to excel at any sports coach, you need to love your sport, you need to understand it inside and out. And equally, if not more important, you need to understand how people tick how they develop at different ages and stages, their individual personality, their characteristics, how to get the best out of various different people from all sorts of walks of life, both male and female, young and old. So there is no definitive answer to how many hours, but I've been doing it for, this is my 30th year, and I still feel very much like there is so much to learn, uh, and I will continue to be a student of the game for as long as I breathe. So it, it's a lifetime of dedication to continually develop. Question six, with everything closed, how would a young person keep developing their tennis skills? 
another great question. The Ironically, the lockdown has actually helped with a lot of uh, tennis players to realise that they can develop the skills at home. Quite often, the physical skills are the ones that are the hardest to sell with a lot of tennis players. So we've seen a lot of people do fitness at home, whether that be agility work, uh, coordination work, strength, skill development in terms of controlling the ball in a small space. We've seen lots of online or social media challenges like volleying against a wall all around, all around the way uh, around your house. We've seen tricks, you know, trick shot challenges. And uh, so the ways you can develop your skills at home are to just play, literally play, have as much fun playing in different ways, challenge yourself to come up with different ideas. Personally, I've got uh, really back into fitness over lockdown, so I've done a lot of stuff uh, at home, but I get bored easily, so I've invented lots of different ways to keep fit, doing other sports as well, football in the garden, playing with my young children, uh, creating obstacle courses, yeah, anything to keep us feeling like we are playing. So question number seven, what programs or groups do you suggest young people go to to get training? That's quite a big question. So if I was, uh, well, I advise young people all the time. Uh, number one, I would suggest that if you can do something through your club, that would be a good way of uh, going on a path maybe to get qualified as a coach. But education in general is really important. So if you work hard at school, you get the appropriate qualifications to gain access to a college or university to do a subject that you're passionate about. That's probably my biggest tip for young people is discover as early as you can what you're really passionate about and try and attach your education to that. And then when you're at college or at university, try and get practical experience at doing that. So you could link back to a sports club. Uh, there's 100% definite in that when you do become educated in anything, that's one thing, to be informed or educated is one thing, but to be practically able to apply that information is the most important thing. Uh, at the end of the day, you are, unless you're a professor or a lecturer, your uh, ability or recognition is gonna be based on what you can do, not on just the information that you know. So find out what you love, Attach that to education, whether it be college, university, uh, night classes, open university, whatever uh, kind of pathway you want to go down. And then look while you're there to try and bring that practical uh, information, uh, bring that information to life practically by working alongside people that can already do what you want to become. Number eight, could you tell people about a new project that you are doing? Wow. I'm in law, involved in lots of new projects. So if I give one specific one through the Judy Murray Foundation, we are working with a group or a community in an area of Glasgow called Mary Hill, where there are three or four derelict uh, park courts and we are uh, trying very hard to uh, get the relevant people to upgrade these courts for the local community. And what the Judy Murray Foundation is doing is working with partner groups in that area and developing a workforce to bring starter type tennis to the community. So essentially we will build a workforce to go out into the community to introduce tennis to all ages and stages, not just children, to adults as well, parents. Uh, and we are building people to deliver that. So we are using the people in the local community. That's what the Judy Murray Foundation is all about. Taking tennis to socially disadvantaged and rural communities and building the workforce from the people in the community. So we're empowering them, developing their skills, uh, kind of uh, opening up opportunities for them, uh, developing close relationships in their community. So that, that's really what the Judy Murray Foundation is all about. We have several projects, but that's probably the one that springs to my mind first. Number nine, what sparks people getting into sports coaching and training? What was the spark? For me, the spark was uh, purely, I, I love the sport uh, and I can't uh, overemphasize that. I really genuinely love tennis. Uh, I love the, the nature of it. 
how complex it is, how difficult it is to play and therefore difficult to teach. So I think you need that first of all. Uh, I also think you need an innate uh, desire to help people. If you're going to be a teacher or a coach, you, are, you have to be quite selfless. You have to want to help the people that are in front of you. Uh, and I think you could have the love of the sport and maybe the skills to play the sport, but that doesn't necessarily translate to the ability to coach it or teach it because you might not be, you might not have the skills or the desire to actually work and help with people. So I think you need both. Uh, to the actual point where you, there are some examples in world tennis where someone doesn't maybe have the tennis experience, but they wanted to help people and they've actually found a way. So. I think you need both ultimately, but if I was going to say you need what spark do you need, it's to help people, the desire to help people. Number 10, how old were you when you got into tennis? So I, can, I mentioned that very briefly earlier on. I was relatively late. I was 12 years old. It was 1985, so now you can work out my age. Uh, and I got into tennis because of Boris Becker, who is a German tennis player who won Wimbledon when he was 17 years old. So he was still a junior when he won Wimbledon, which is mind blowing. But he was the first sports person that I ever idolized uh, and I could relate to because he was only five years older than me. So that's why I started playing tennis uh, at 12 years old. Number 11, how was your overall tennis experience through life and how would you encourage people to be at the stage of coaching you are? My personal experience, uh, it could be a very long video, but uh, to keep it short, I do not come from uh, a wealthy background. Uh, I was a working class kid from a council estate, uh, so I didn't have a lot of money. So my experience to start with was very much uh, feeling like a stranger in the sport. Couldn't relate to the people that played tennis because they had uh, lots of uh, money, lots of great equipment. I didn't really have much of that, uh, but I quickly, as I said earlier, fell in love with the sport uh, and then found a new set of friends at the tennis club uh, and then quickly got addicted to competing at tennis. So I travelled uh, all around, first of all locally, around the district clubs in my area uh, and then started to travel further afield into other areas of Scotland and then eventually started travelling a, a little bit down south when I was about 18 or so, uh, 18 and 19. I played tournaments down south. I did a little bit abroad, uh, but more kind of attached to when I was on holiday, etc. Uh, so that was my kind of experience of playing. Uh, and I suppose in many ways, I didn't really feel like things started until I actually started to coach when I was 19. Uh, and how would I encourage people to get to the stage of coaching I'm at? I touched on it earlier on, but I'm a huge believer that you need mentors when you are learning. So I was very lucky. I had strong mentors all the way from when I started playing uh, to when I started coaching. Uh, so my number one tip is attach yourself to people who are like-minded, passionate, but have been there, seen it, done it, got the t-shirt on where you want to go. So I was lucky uh, early in my coaching career, I had Judy Murray uh, as, as a kind of mentor, whether she was aware of it or not, she was. She took me under her wing, uh, gave me a chance to play a part in her national coaching team at Scotland, uh, Tennis Scotland. And yeah, so I had her, then later on, I've worked with a, a guy called Louis Kaye, who is a world-class coach, uh, coach to Jamie Murray. Uh, for many years, but has coached many world-class uh, singles and doubles players, but above all is an, a, a genius in terms of coaching and coaching methodology, but has a big heart and is very open to sharing his experiences and his knowledge. So number one tip to encourage uh, all of you, if you have a passion to be, uh, be like someone or have the skills of someone, then go work with them. Uh, you'll find that most people uh, if they're genuine, they will more than happy allow you to shadow them, watch what they do, they'll invest in you. So uh, look for those people and don't be scared to ask them to help you. Right, last question. So young people know more about you. Please show them your best skill. That's a pretty tough one to do in my living room, but uh, I've got my racket here. I don't know, hopefully you can see this. My number one skill that I like to do is spin my racket on my finger. 
Uh, a lot of kids, when you see when they see you do this, they kind of get a bit hypnotized. They want to try it. If you've got a tennis racket, give it a go, but watch you don't mash up your nails. So that would be the skill that I would show uh, in the situation that I'm in now, which is in my living room. But of course, if I was on a tennis court, I would show you way more fantastic skills. So I hope you have managed to get something from that. And um, yeah, thanks for listening.